The Secretary General of the United Nations will say what the goal is, but how it works is that you make changes, you'll watch those net emissions go down, and hopefully this temperature over on the right will change. There are more assumptions I may show you later, but that's the basic of, basics of the world that we have uh, assumed at the start. It's not our forecast of where things are headed. Uh, the changes at the bottom that you're gonna be able to, to look at, and by the way, these are summarized in a document that you could look at now and start to orient yourself. And maybe, I'll pass it back to you, Yazzie, if you could explain how people can look at the guide to the control panel. Sure, so in the zip file uh, that I sent um, in the chat, which is called Climate Action Simulation Materials, uh, you'll find a document called uh, Guide to the Control Panel, which looks like this. Uh, so in that uh, zip file that you'll be able to see in the chat, that's where you'll find that document. And if you're not able to find it in chat, write in chat, hey, yes, me, I can't find it. And she'll answer and, and direct you. Uh, the basic idea is this shows all the levers that you can change, all the things that we can do to address climate change. And they're summarized here in this document of you can address coal, encourage it or discourage it, same with oil and gas. Um, renewable energy, nuclear, some of the things I mentioned before, uh, but also carbon price, um, which is going to put a tax functionally on coal, oil, and gas, more on coal because there's more carbon in coal than in natural gas. Uh, a new technology you could imagine, such as thorium fission, a new kind of nuclear. You can invest in energy efficiency and transportation or in buildings. You can electrify, have Elon Musk drive through Tesla and other organizations the growth in uh, electric cars, but also electrification of homes and industry and buildings. You can plant more trees, cut methane and other gases. This is plant-based diets and other actions and oil and gas. You can reduce deforestation. You can do what's called technological carbon removal. That is five different methods of pulling carbon out of the atmosphere technologies that don't exist at a large scale, but maybe they could help someday. You could also imagine a world with slower economic growth. Maybe some of you have imagined that world over that last week, uh, like it or not. Population could also grow more slowly or more quickly. So those are all the things that we'll look at and you can, that, you'll, that will be important for you to understand that you can change when you actually play the game. Yazi, any questions? Uh, that we ought to address? I think it seems like folks are able to find the documents. I don't see any issues so far. So I don't think there's any big questions at the moment. Okay. All right, well, here we go. Um, we're about to go into the very first team meeting. And the way that's going to work, excuse me, something, someone's banging outside, sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go into the first team meeting. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to go meet the people on your team. Yazzie has put you into one of six different teams. You'll be going to discover which one you're on. And when you get there, what we want you to do is look at that guide to the control panel document that we mentioned. Oh, wait, that's, this is team number, uh, hold on. Uh, that's the wrong, it's this one. Introduce yourself very briefly to each other. Say your name, say where you're from. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your team's briefing statement within the file that Yazzie sent you. And she could send it again over in chat if it's helpful to find it again, to have it really fresh right there in chat. And it's gonna look like briefing statement. And if and if your team is named Climate Hawks, go read just the one on Climate Hawks. If you're Conventional Energy, read that one. Um, and Yazzie, how they'll know their name is they'll land and in the top corner, it'll say, right? It'll say, here's which team you're on. So it's a two page document, read it. You don't need to read every word, but read it to get a sense of which team you're on. You're gonna be representing that group in the negotiations. You can look at the one page of the guide of the control panel and then talk as a team 
about what your group thinks about climate. Do they want to address it strongly or weakly? In what way? Think, how might I, if I were an actual oil executive, or if I were running an airline company today, how would I think about climate? Talk with each other in your breakout group about that. Um, next thing you're gonna do is to get a new virtual background, and Yazzie's gonna show you in a minute how to do that, and get into character. If you are with Conventional Energy, you are Rex Tillerson, the Texas oil man, or you're Greta Thunberg, and you're an activist, so think of it that way and get into character, feel it. Um, all right, so Yazzie, would you explain to everybody how they're going to um, use the virtual backgrounds? Yeah, sure. And just uh, a quick note, I see uh, Kurt and Caroline um, asking about having that slide when we go into breakout rooms. So I'll also be pasting that text. So you should all have it in your chat when you yeah. go into the breakout rooms. And I see that they've posted it as a screenshot in the chat as well. So you'll have those instructions. And there's also a file in that zip folder called instructions. And that text is also pasted there. So for the virtual background, where you see your little video icon, you can click that little arrow next to it that pops up different options and it says choose virtual background. And so I'll do it as an example for me. So now I'm clicking choose virtual background and I'm given a list of images and you can add your own image and that's where you can add the image from your uh, from your group that you're assigned to, which are all in a folder called background images uh, in that zip file as well. So for example, just I'm putting the climate interactive background here. So that's what it'll look like. And if folks aren't doing video, that's okay too. It's not uh, super necessary. Another option that we found that might be useful is to maybe put in your uh, name and your username, your group, so that folks can just get a sense of uh, who's so, in Yazzie, someone just suggested showing your screen for the, to show the process that you just used for, is that possible? Yeah, unfortunately, um, when you show your screen, Zoom kind of shows up as invisible. Uh, so so it won't show that. You wouldn't be okay. able to see it. Okay, and this is optional. If you can't figure it out, <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, um, well, okay. Kind of it makes sense. Great, so, uh, then what we're doing is, I guess I'll take us back really briefly. Yazzie's going to send you these instructions again, but uh, to ground us, it's pretty important. Again, introduce yourself and read your team's briefing statement and uh, talk as a team together and load your virtual background. So I think, Yazzie, you can um, open the rooms and try it. Thank you for coming to this meeting. My name is Antonio Guterres. I'm the Secretary General of the United Nations. I just came from a meeting of the World Health Organization. The world's situation is dire, as you know. As we cope, though, with COVID-19 and all of the necessary preparations around the world, I wanted to take this hour and a half to make sure that we take the time to talk about a second question, is there will be a world after COVID-19. There will be economic growth. There will be people returning to their lives, governments back to other matters. My big question to you, how will we organize our economy, our governments, and our lives in ways that avoids the next global crisis? That is the challenge that I am living with today. That is why I'm bringing you six stakeholder groups to advise us because we think your views are particularly critical when we think about the investments that we can make and the policies that we can make to address climate change, to keep warming to well below two degrees with an effort to get 1.5 so that we don't have to deal with other global crises in the future. This is one that we can prevent people and I'm calling on you to help do it. So that is my question. When our economy returns, what shall we invest in to prevent the next global crisis? 
as you know, it's already happening. Uh, up to two trillion dollars here in the U.S. of bailout requests. The oil industry, the uh, particularly the airlines and oil, and I see you out there. I see the representatives in conventional energy. You are asking Trump in the United States for a bailout because of low prices. And airlines, industry and commerce, I'm talking to you right now. You are asking for huge bailouts. And I ask you back, if you're gonna do these things, what are you gonna do to prevent the next crisis? What are you gonna do to make sure that we reduce future temperature to well below two degrees. So there it is, limit warming to well below two degrees or 1.5. Who are you? You know who you are, you just talk to each other, but you need to hear about the other organizations, the other groups and stakeholders who are here. Conventional energy, largest ener energy supply in the world. Person, formerly of Exxon, formerly of the Trump administration, we're glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Um, coal, oil, gas, nuclear. The tech industry, automakers, construction, consumer products, high tech, land, forest, and ag, landowners around the world, Cargill. We have a representative, an actual representative. Uh, from there, Climus Justice Hawks. Greta Thunberg, we're glad you sailed your way here. Thank you for coming. And Sunrise Movement, Extinction Rebellion, 350.org, Sierra Club. Uh, all of you together, fast growing nations, developed countries, island nations, the poorest countries of the world, all of you are here. So thank you for joining. Here's what's gonna happen. You're going to go meet with your team and you're going to get to choose one action that you're going to simulate in the model. So I'm going to ask you at the end of this to pick one person to propose in 60 seconds one action. You can set a carbon price. You can have energy efficiency. You can have more nuclear. You can have carbon removal. You're going to choose one thing that you would like to see. And or you can undo what someone did before. You didn't like that they promoted energy efficiency in buildings. Undo it. The move is going to be one notch that will show you in En-ROADS. I'm going to pause for a second. Yazzie, is the tech working? Is everything clear? And is everybody hearing all this? You are freezing up a little bit, but I think for the most part, it's been okay. Uh, we kind of lose your video a little bit. Some people are suggesting maybe it's the background. Uh, but for the most part, we're getting it. The slides have been good. We're just losing your okay. video a little bit. Great. Along the way, I want you to think, are there co-benefits to this action? If there are, definitely do those things. And as you're doing it, think about how to make sure that you don't hurt the marginalized communities. They're trying to help with this by implementing whatever you're doing. We want you to multi-solve. So what you're going to do is you're going to go look at this document and pick the top three things as a team that you really want to promote. So what are the three favorite things that you would like to suggest? But also, what is your number one? And you're going to pick a person to propose that one thing. So here's your instruction. You're about to get this sent to you over text as well or over the chat. Look at the guide. What are the two or three things that you really want? A proposal is one of those actions. Talk with your team. Agree on what number one is going to be. And select one person who's going to give a 60-second presentation to everybody in order to propose it to the group. Now, again, I'm going to take my hat off a second. Don't fight too hard about this. Choose something and move on because we want to just test how this works. Um, you're going to get these instructions sent to you. Uh, your briefing sheet is going to be very helpful. It tells you, here's what you should care about. Here's what, and you're not thinking for yourself. Again, play your role. You are being that person. You are not a oil executive who's seen the light. If you were that, you would be a climate justice hawk. Switch teams. All right. Anything else you would add, Yazzie? 
I don't think so. Uh... All right, then let's open up these rooms, these breakout rooms. You're gonna go back to your breakout room. You're gonna choose three things. You're gonna choose one final thing. You're gonna choose one person. Come back. Urgency, people, urgency, get to it. Hurry up. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're back. Hopefully, you've had the time to uh, come up with your plan. And so here's how this is going to work. We're going to get a 60-second proposal. The first group is going to be uh, clean energy. So whoever it was the person from clean energy. Um, and if you're not ready, we'll just move on to the next group. I do have a timer here. You really are only going to have 60 seconds to say, here's what I propose. And the words when you propose it need to be, you need to use the words like encourage energy efficiency and transport. Use the words from your briefing sheet and don't talk around it a lot. I don't need a lot of rhetoric. I need to know what you're going to do, why you're going to do it briefly. There's great urgency, my people. All right. So if the representative from clean energy can raise their hand, Yazzie's going to give you the floor and uh, we'd love to hear from you. And Yazzie, let's make sure that we get to see their face nice and big, whoever that is. So clean energy, you're raising your hand, whoever that is, and we're giving you the floor. Um, and if someone else knows who it is, uh, there's Agnes raising Agnes. her hand. Great. Yes, Agnes, I'm going to unmute you. So go ahead. Great. Thank you. So as the clean energy group representative, uh, we would like to propose that we would like to put a carbon, a price on carbon, like all um, uh, carbon um, or all forms of carbon, because we believe this is a crucial uh, step um, to get ahead with cleaner energy. And we believe this can have many uh, co-benefits because we can use the price that comes in from the carbon price to, to subsidize renewables, uh, to do different projects in terms of um, afforestation or any other forms. Um, and, and we believe this, this price can also go to like marginalized communities or people who might lose out um, on, the, the, on the supposed um, effect this would have on um, fossil fuels. Great. Thank you very much to the representative from the Clean Energy Group. I'd like to promote that is exactly what we should do. That was 45 seconds. It was very clear. It mentioned co-benefits. Fantastic. Okay. What we're going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and here we go. We're going to look at the simulation. So the proposal that we heard just now is to promote a carbon price. You see the simulator right now. Here we are. And I'm going to pull up another graph, which is the emissions of greenhouse gases. So over down here, carbon price. And one move in carbon price land is $50 a ton. So I'd like you to think, if we had a $50 a ton carbon price, that is basically, it's going to be more expensive for coal, oil, and gas companies to uh, emit carbon. And then also the users of it will pay higher prices, $50 a ton. So the first thing I want you to think, which of these slot of these lines will move the most do you think which colored line so say to yourself perhaps right into chat um which of these is going to move coal oil gas bioenergy renewables think 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 and now we're going to test it all right here we go we're gonna so i just hit it and i'm going to go over here and i'm going to run it again let's see what happens which line moved the most the brown line coal Coal is the most carbon intensive of the fossil fuels. It's the most sensitive to any increase in a carbon price. Therefore, it goes down a lot and it goes down very soon. And you also see some shifts in other things. The blue line of natural gas goes down. It's a, it's a fossil fuel. The red line of oil doesn't move that much. $50 a ton is only about 40 cents on a gallon of gas. So it's not that big a change. It doesn't move but emissions go down a good bit. Why? We're burning less coal, oil, and gas. And you can see it with much more definition in this graph right here. I'll run it again. This shows the stacked area of emissions from land use CO2, energy CO2, that's burning coal, oil, and gas in, brown, in black. Then on top of it are F gases, methane, and nitrous oxide. So 
We have a lot less energy CO2 when we have a carbon price. Now there's something else going on. Think about what would happen if we had a high carbon price around the world. What would happen to energy prices? Think, think, think. What would happen to the cost of energy? Well, this is a big problem for the energy, for a just transition. How do we make sure that we don't hurt poor people around the world and hurt the things that we want to have with high energy costs? However, it also has another, you could say, benefit. What would happen to energy demand if we had high energy prices? So energy consumption actually goes down. People have more of a reason to conserve with a carbon price. So it's a little bit lower energy demand in the long term. So that 4.1 went all the way down to 3.6. That's a huge benefit. Did it save the world? Did it save the climate? No. Did it help? Absolutely. There, you don't plant a garden with one seed. One seed, like just a carbon price, won't do this. We're going to need to plant many other seeds in the garden that's going to get us all the way to where we want to go of well below two degrees. So thank you for that suggestion. The next one's going to be industry and commerce. Yazzie, could you uh, welcome industry and commerce? Yeah, so if anyone from that group would like to just virtually raise their hand. Oh, here we go. Perfect. So uh, Ronald should be unmuted. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you for this opportunity um, to speak on behalf of the oil, um, coal, and natural gas industry. Uh, here in uh, what we what we see here in Hawaii, uh, if I can speak directly to that, is uh, we are having record temperatures uh, and schools are suffering. Actually, uh, excuse me. Yes, sir. What I'd like you to do is not speak to any local place. Okay. And we need you to just say, here's our proposal. Okay. And here's why. Got it. Okay. So you've got proposal... 40 seconds. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Our proposal is to boost energy efficiency. Uh, particularly in buildings and in industry, because what we are seeing worldwide is record temperatures and uh, schools are suffering, uh, children are not learning. Uh, and what we propose is to uh, donate 50% uh, of the cost of renewable energy air conditioning to schools around the world. And we feel this is a very important proposal. Thank and you. We're solidly behind it. Thank you very much. You kept within a minute, appreciate that very much. Here's we're gonna go over and we're gonna see what it does. So the proposal was energy efficiency in buildings and industry. Energy efficiency in buildings and industry. So what we're focusing on here is not the mix of energy, but the energy demand and overall consumption of energy. Already, what's very good is that you already have a policy that is slowing the rate of growth. So see the blue line? It's growing more slowly. But if we're able to invest in insulation, efficient motors, efficient HVAC systems, efficient lighting, system controls, things that turn off the lights when you leave a room and all around the world, then we will see an increase in the rate of improvement of energy efficiency in buildings and industry. Right now, it is 1.2% a year. We're gonna increase it one notch so it's going to be over here to about to an increase so watch over on the left think again what's it going to do what is it going to do overall to energy consumption boom flattens it by the second half of the century 0.2 degrees c did it save the world no did it help yes why because energy demand goes down and we get to see the huge impact of it on overall energy Watch now, we already were had less coal, but coal goes down less, more and natural gas goes down in blue. Watch how it goes down. Energy efficiency helps, it pays back, it has co-benefits. Thank you for that proposal. Okay, we're gonna go on to number three. Number three are the climate justice hawks. Yazzie set us up because we're at 3.3 degrees, we need to do better. Yeah, just looking for any sign from that team. If you wanna just- Raise your hand if you're the Climate Justice Hawk speaker. Yep, or if you can't figure that out, just write in the chat and I'll look for your name. So we're looking for the Climate Justice Hawk or anyone on that team, you know what you need to do. 
So somebody raise their hand. There's Allison. Allison, I see you. You should be unmuted. All right. So we have decided our very lives are at stake. Our future is at stake. We need to take action right now. So we want to keep uh, fossil fuels in the ground. So our action will be to um, stop building any new coal infrastructure and keep that in the ground. Thank you very much. Such brevity, Allison, from Climate Justice Hawks. 21 seconds. Love it. Okay, what if we just stop building infrastructure? And um, so I'm going to take that proposal and good news, bad news. So I'm going to share my screen and go over here. You all see my screen again, correct? This is the world you've created, energy efficiency and carbon price. Um, what if we addressed coal even more? Um, in the model, you can actually ban all coal infrastructure around the world. I understand that Extinction Rebellion and Sunrise Movement and everybody would like to ban it entirely, but we're going to have to build up to that with several moves. You can't just do that. That is too unilateral a move. So what we're going to allow you to do is a significant tax that will lead to what you're talking about. So think about which line's going to go down. Obviously, the brown line. But what kind of compensating feedback might, what might go up as a result? Think about what the system-wide impacts might be. Here we are, I'm going to tax it. I'm gonna allow a high tax a watch as I make the change. We have less coal in the world. And that 3.3, notice a little bit of compensation. What's going on? Well, we actually have the natural gas is going up a little bit and we don't actually have a full change in 0.1 degree C. However, if you look at Fahrenheit, you see that Fahrenheit goes from 6.0 to 5.9. Why didn't it help that much? It didn't help that much because you already have a carbon price that has really done an amazing job of taking the growth in coal and bringing it down to a reduction in coal. And so to bring it down some more, perhaps you could have a higher carbon price, um, but there's your contribution. We're at 3.3, we hope to do better. The next group is gonna be land. So land, forests, agriculture. Could someone from that group raise their hand? Um, and I think we still, we need to switch Yazzie who's on the screen. Um, so, and I do understand, yes, the group did ask for more coal infrastructure. That is too significant and large a move that would relative to what other groups can do. So I didn't allow that. Actually, you know what? I'm going back. I'm convinced. <laughs> it's a tough day. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, so here we were. I'm undoing that. And I just, so you can play with this and when I mean, you go play with the model, what if we didn't just tax coal, but we entirely stopped building new coal infrastructure? Boom. 3.2. Say it, oh, I'm not sharing the screen yet. Sorry. Uh, my fault. Uh, here we go. Share screen. Okay. We're going back to uh, and what if, here we were at 3.3, what if we ban all infrastructure? Again, we've already have a high carbon price. Boom. There it is. So if we entirely get rid of coal, 3.2. It's still not a huge improvement. Why? There's a compensating effect. There's the squeeze the balloon problem. You get more natural gas uh, to compensate, but still 3.2. We're doing much better. Okay, let's go to land. Okay, so for land, I see bus, so I'm going to unmute you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we from the um, land, agriculture and forestry, uh, we acknowledge the problem. We want to work together. Uh, and what we see in establishing a just transition is that we are subsidizing renewables. We can work together, put solar panels on our roofs, wind turbines in our fields. And that's why we want to propose um, subsidizing renewables. Great. Great. Um, thank you. You want to subsidize renewables. And one note, you'll notice 
Um, this is a time, and we may send you back soon to be able to chat with your group because um, what you'll see uh, is that uh, you may want to be adjusting your strategy over time to what has been proposed already. Let's watch what happens here because the big thing that wind and solar does is it kills coal. You've already killed coal. So now I want you to think that green line is going to go up. What are you going to keep in the ground? Uh, well, this is a straight question. If you have wind and solar growth, which of these lines going to go down? What are you going to keep in the ground, uh, if not coal? And then we'll see how much it helps. So I hope you're thinking about the blue line, because here we are. We're going to crank up this renewable subsidy, watch it grow, and then watch what the impact is. So blue goes down. We have less natural gas. It really doesn't do very much to oil at all, of course, because you can't power your uh, vehicles and transportation with wind and solar, unless we electrify a lot as well. But here we are with um, more wind and solar. It keeps some gas in the ground. 3.2 goes down to 3.1. This is a better world. You're doing better. 3.1 is getting closer to two. All right, next group is conventional energy. Conventional energy. Uh, what would you propose? And, or raise your hand so that you can join. I don't see anyone at the moment. So or anybody can... from conventional energy, raise yeah. your hand or uh, write or in there. Right in the chat. Right in the chat, conventional energy. I saw the Siegel family, maybe one of the Siegel boys. Okay. Tamara, there you go. Go ahead, Tamara. Okay, so um, we really want to preserve our ability to, um, to continue to, uh, to protect our business. So, um, we're going to propose um, to uh, take away the, uh, the high carbon price. Absolutely. I totally understand. This is the key, project, the key thing that you all, your industry does in the world. Of course, the state of Washington six months ago proposed a carbon price of $15 a ton, and the oil, coal, and gas industry spent millions in public relations in order to stop that. So appropriately, you're doing the same thing here. And let's go and see what the impact would be. So here we were. Um, and we're going to get rid of that carbon price. And it's interesting. Oh, here we go. So we've banned all coal around the world. No new infrastructure. But I am going to get rid of this and see what it does. So here we are at 3.1. Think, what's it going to do? We're still going to have a no coal, right? We already have done that. So that's another thing to undo. But you're not undoing that. What's it going to affect? Probably gas and probably oil. Let's see. OK, I'm going to move it back to, well, I'm going to make sure it's 0, 0. And I'm going to change this to 0. And it brings temperature back up 0.2 degrees. So do you see that little nudge up of coal, oil, and gas? All those things go up. The temperature goes back. So we made some progress. Now we're pulling back because of this blockage by fossil fuel industry. Thank you for your contribution to that. Now we go to the governments. Governments of the world. Uh, make a proposal, please. Raise your hand, somebody from governments. Here comes Pauline. Thank you, Pauline. Uh, sorry, I had a phone call there I have to deal with. Um, well, Go ahead, Pauline, you have the floor. What would you like to do? I'm in a bit of a quandary because we voted carbon tax number one. Of course, it got voted in, and then it just got voted out. Now, I, for my own technical curiosity, I'd like to see. Uh, Actually, for one second, we don't want technical curiosity. I what know. do you think would really help here? You can carbon redo your tax. carbon price. All right, that's Why it, carbon tax. You spoke. World governments say, and there are over 50 subnational and national organizations that have a carbon tax. It is appropriate for government to say this is legitimate because it is happening around the world. We're going to bring it back. $50 a ton. All right, $50 a ton. 
boom, we're at 3.1. Okay, everybody, everyone has spoken. Everyone has had a chance to propose something. And so now... Um, Drew, could you share your screen really quick? So we can see that last move. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so 3.1 degrees, 3.1. My friends, you have gotten far, you have not gotten all the way. And so what we're gonna do now is allow you to uh, come up with, a, we're gonna have another meeting, you're gonna go back to your breakout group and talk about what next. But there's some exciting news. Against my wishes, the United Nations Environment Program has leaked this model to the world. They put it on WikiLeaks. And now you can go and simulate this scenario. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to share your scenario, copy scenario link, and I really hope I do this right. So I'm gonna to go to stop share and I'm gonna do a message to everyone, right? Everyone in the meeting and I'm gonna send this. So appoint the nerds from your team to go open this scenario and look at it and say, when we analyze it, what else is needed? Um, if So some of you go do that. The others of you, listen to me as I talk through some of my analysis of where you're at. And the main graph to look at is this, and I'm gonna pull it up really big, I hope. Yeah, oh, it didn't work. Okay, we're just gonna look at it here. Um, see this? Graph, this shows you why you're still getting the warming that you're getting. Why are you getting this warming? You see this black area of energy CO2, it's grown, it's fallen some, it's shrinking, but it's not small yet. Why is it not small? You're burning a lot of oil. See the red line? You have done very little. $50 a ton doesn't touch oil. You haven't done anything in energy efficiency and transport or electrification. Hey Drew, you have, yeah. did you share your screen? Oh, geez. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yazzie. Uh, I'm pointing and no one is seeing. Pardon me, everybody. Um, can you tell it's a pilot, my friends? All right. So see this black area? That is energy CO2. It's shrinking, but it's not small. Why? Because of oil. See the red line? You're not working on energy efficiency in oil. You're not electrifying. You need to get that down if you want to get temperature down more. Now, mind you, conventional energy and commerce and industry, you wouldn't like that. The other big thing, look at this blue area. What's that blue line? CH4, methane. You have a lot of methane that you are emitting. You haven't touched it at all. Also, here are deforestation emissions in green, and you have done nothing on negative emissions at all, pulling none out. So these are some of the opportunities. What we're going to do is send you into your next meeting. Here's what, as I just said, go try the simulator and then talk with each other about what proposal you would like to make for round two. So we're gonna open up the chat, excuse me, we're gonna open up the groups. You're gonna go back, talk about what you wanna do now and meet the goal. Time is short, go get them. Okay, Yasmin, are we all back? Yep, we're all back. Everybody, I appreciate the speed and efficiency with which you're acting right now and pardon the urgency of all this. This is uh, such pressure for us to come up with a scenario that's gonna work to rebuild our economy post COVID-19. Hopefully you had a chance to look and see what's high leverage, what's low leverage. We're gonna do this round uh, via the chat feature. We're gonna pick up the pace. We need to like figure out what it's gonna to take to get well below two degrees. So um, clean energy, could the representative from clean energy please um, write in, and I'm looking to see where the, uh, so write into the chat box what uh, your proposal is. And, uh, Clean energy, clean energy. 
And just a note, clean energy, also known as clean tech. So we've got something from Thank Agnes. You. Clean tech. Agnes says, increase the carbon tax further. Increase the carbon tax further, she says. So here we were at $50 a ton. Further to us means another $50 a ton. So again, mentally simulate it. What do we think it's going to do? When we go past $50 a ton to 100, are we going to keep that gas in the ground? Are we going to do anything to oil? There aren't many alternatives to oil that you can easily shift to. And this is only, say, 90 cents on a gallon of gas. So here we go. We're going to go up to 100, mentally simulate. What do you think it's going to do? Watch the red line. Oh, man, I thought it would do more, even though I played with this thing a lot. So 3.1, 2.9 but we're below three degrees. Does it save the world? No. Does it help? Yes. One seed won't do it. One seed won't plant a garden. Okay. Thank you very much. Industry and commerce, please in the chat box, what would you like to propose? 2.9 is where we're at. 2.9. Um, we're waiting for industry and commerce. We had the gentleman from Hawaii last time, I think, proposing something. So could somebody, actually anybody, you just talked as a team, anybody from there, industry and commerce, reduce agricultural waste and emissions by 30%. So I'm assuming this is the other gases. Um, and I'm going to pull up here some of these other gases. Uh, land use, sorry. Uh, and other, let's see if they're right here, net carbon removal sources. Uh, uh, no, I think we'll just not look at that another graph. We're going to look here and watch the blue area as we go underneath and look at non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions. Already they're coming down. Why are they coming down already? You haven't done anything directly about land and food and ag, but less oil, less gas means less leakage, which means less methane into the atmosphere. Here, ag food and waste, 30%. We're going to reduce this down. Let's see, I'm going to go right to minus 30 and see what it does. Wow, what a big reduction if we were to get these results. Travis Frank on our call has been working on this area. 2.7 from 2.9. This makes a big difference. Look at the blue area of methane here on the graph on the right shrink as we reduce ag waste emissions. This is wastewater, this is landfills, this is more vegetarian diets, so this is less cows, all of that cowspiracy stuff. If they win, this is some of what happens. Thank you. Okay, what else? Industry and commerce, the next are the climate hawks. What do you got next, climate hawks? Write it into chat, please. We want to leave oil in the ground. Okay. Well, I'm going to let that happen because I'm really curious to see what it would do as well. So if, and I think I'm going off script a little bit here, people, because uh, I am. And we may need to reconsider whether we're going to allow this in the future. But what if we were to stop building new oil infrastructure? This is like Oil Change International and the people who are just banning offshore uh, mining and drilling for oil. Okay, if we banned it, watch the red line. Watch the red line. So we just had the red line goes down. There's some compensation. Why we're getting um, less electrification. Um, no, more electrification, I think, is naturally happening in the world of transport. And we're getting more natural gas to compensate also more wind and solar, and we're getting down to 2.5. We're getting so much closer, 2.5 degrees. Thank you, Climate Hawks. Land, food, and ag, what next? What are you gonna propose? Land, food, and ag, uh, right into chat. What are you gonna propose? 2.5 degrees, we're getting closer to two degrees. So anyone from Land, Food, and Ag, if you're going to propose something, write it into chat. What is your action going to be? Looking over here, you can see all the emissions. 
Here's what's remaining. What else do we need to do to get well below two degrees? So if actually anybody from that team, if you could write here or um, we might just choose something. So anyone, land, food, and ag. All right. Oh, proposed modification of methane restriction on agriculture back to 0%. Wow. So they say, no, this would be undue pressure on our industry to have to make these changes. We say, no, we're not going to do that. So ag and waste emissions back here, we get some pushback from the industry. That 30 goes back to zero. 2.8. Wow. Okay. Two steps forward, one step back. This is how the world works sometimes. That's how your world is working right now. Okay. Conventional energy. What are you going to propose? Conventional energy. All right. We're looking here to see. Uh, boo. <laughs> There's a message for the climate hawks. We need no time to backstop and not take action. The climate hawks are speaking up. We want to delay the banning of infrastructure, says Tamara. Okay, so you know what? Maybe because we need to rebuild after the COVID-19 crisis, we should delay this. So I'm going to give you guys five years here. What if instead of 2025, this happened in 2030 for coal? For coal? And it's a little later, but you already have a carbon price. So that delaying of the infrastructure won't do that much. But here, what if this is delayed? I'm going to give this one 10 years. Year to stop. I'm going to give this one 2035. What if they're able to push it back even more? Watch the red line. They push it back up to 2.8. Okay, that's the delay. That's what happens if you delay. Okay, 2.8 degrees. Um, Conventional. Uh, government, what is your proposal? Government, what is your proposal? All right. We're seeing more lobbying of other groups. So government of the world, what is your proposal? You get to write up here what you're going to do. Electrify transport. Interesting. Now, I'd like you to think about electrifying transport. Why it's helpful is because it could cut oil. Now, you've cut oil down to zero already. So I wonder if that's going to do anything. You definitely have a green grid. So it's the time to do it. So watch what happens if we electrify transport. I'm curious. It doesn't really move the oil line much. Watch. It makes a little wiggle, but not much because you've already kept oil in the ground. Um, all right. What's next? We're at back around to clean energy. And we're going to have a quick round of some more. And then we're running out of time. So uh, make your suggestions. What's next? Clean energy. What would you like to see? Carbon removal technology. There are five different types. You could get into all of them. But what we'd like to do here is to explore what would their impact be if we did, in this case, most all of them. So carbon removal technology. Uh, watch what happens here if we were to imagine bioenergy carbon capture and storage, direct air capture, biochar, ag soil carbon, and mineralization where you crutch up the rocks and they suck the carbon out of the atmosphere. If we get a large amount of it, there it is. It is 0.3 degrees. That is a huge amount of carbon removal. See this gray area? That's removals of pulling it out of the atmosphere. That's why it's below the zero line. It's pulling it out. It's negative emissions to compensate for the emissions. There we are at 2.5. Industry and commerce, you have another suggestion. Carbon, oh wait, you did that. That was you. Uh, climate hawks, what do you like? Climate hawks, what do you like? Climate hawks. You can see where the emissions are. Most of the emissions out in the latter half of the century is methane, frankly. Um, what else do we need to do? All right, we're waiting for Climate Hawks to write something in there. Uh, change the methane. So methane is moving back and forth and back and forth. Here we go. We're going to reduce the methane significantly. 
If we did that, we're back towards 2.3 degrees. Very good, you're closer. Let's see, what's next? Uh, land, food, and ag. What else can, are you gonna do? And land, food, and ag. Someone from industry says, can the agricultural people do a better job and reduce some of their emissions and waste? Um, so, some afforestation and land, food, and ag. I'm gonna move these two things. What if we grow trees and connected with that, deforestation, two degrees, two degrees. Okay, you met your goal, two degrees. Congratulations. Uh, give yourself a hand. Um, actually, unmute everybody if you would. You got to two degrees. If you uh, unmute everybody, Yazzie, and um, I'm curious if you can do that and give yourself a hand. Yes, I think I can do that. So everyone, you're about to be unmuted. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> There's more to be done. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> okay, so let's um, mute everybody back so we have on the line. Um, all right, you did it, or that happened. Um, and uh, so now I'm speaking to you as Drew Jones, not Antonio Guterres. I'm gonna be a little nicer now. And um, what I'd like to do is to pull this back up and uh, ask you to think about this scenario. And actually, I'm gonna send you this scenario um, and then I'm gonna let you play with it even more to see what it would take uh, so I want to put, here's the scenario that we just came up with. Don't do it right now, if you would, because I'd, what I'd really like you to do is to look at this scenario, and I'm also going to just do a few more things and explore really what it would take uh, to get down to the goal that we, are, we really have much more. And I'm going to, I think, I think we did a, an interesting combination. Lori, look at this combination to see why we're getting a weird spike in gas that, that we just got. But um, if we push down, on, I, I undid the, the oil thing. So here we are at 1.9. What else does it take? It takes energy efficiency and transport. We got to get more efficient there. If we were to electrify some more, 1.7, we also would need to energy and industry emissions, F gas is here, 1.6. Um, what else does it take? Uh, I think I'm going to, uh, I guess more CDR, well, empower women and girls, 1.5. You can also reduce the methane and other gases from industrial processes. I think I just did that. Oh, you did, I'm sorry, I missed that one. It's okay. So. I just took what you did, added a bit more. Now slow down. Everyone's going to breathe for a second. And I apologize. It's been so intense. But I'd like to you to think this scenario is technically possible. We didn't put anything in here that defies the laws of physics or biogeochemistry. Uh, everything here is technically possible. It's not socially acceptable. Uh, accessible right now, politically accessible, it is possible. So I'd like you to think, imagine a world that was on track to this happening, this scenario with more renewable energy, pushing back on coal, oil, and gas, more energy efficiency, electrification, less deforestation, cutting methane, growing more trees, removing carbon, um, slowing population growth. Imagine that. What would you love about being part of a world that was making this happen. What would you love about being part of 
the global society movement in education and in industry and everywhere of making this happen. So 60 seconds, consider this possibility. What would you love about it? We're gonna be silent for literally 60 seconds. Okay, that's one minute. So what I'd like you to do now is go to chat and write one to five words in chat, which is your answer. What would you love? Go to chat. I'd love to see all of your answers. We all wanna see all of your answers. Look at your chat box and see what would you love? A brave new world. It's the right thing to do. Clean air new technologies, healthier ecosystems, a collaborative, cooperative place, a new governance system, healthier people, a livable world. You're going to make me cry here. Social harmony, no fear and guilt, brighter futures and hope, literally thinking out of the box, literally saving lives, probably being the most important thing to do in human history, an actual home for my children, tighter community, less dependence on fossil fuels, less suffering, equitable access to resources. This is beautiful, my friends. The beautiful, healthy world we know is possible. Social justice from Lori Siegel. Oh, this is wonderful. All right, what we should do, Yazzie, unmute and everybody read yours. We're gonna hear 40 voices at the same time. Unmute everybody. Uh, let's all say it as a declaration of the possibility that this could actually happen. So unmute, everyone say, here's what I would love about this. Online. About the en routes <sighs> program. <laughs> if we have time for one or two people, so raise your virtual hand. So mute everybody, raise your virtual hand. And again, keep it brief. There are a lot of people on this call. Keep it brief. What, um, somebody who really wants to say something to everybody in a sentence, Yazzie, yeah, let's unmute them and uh, let a few people speak. And we'd love to see your face. So raise your hand if you want to say it. I see Chris Page. Chris, I'm going to unmute you. And if you... Go ahead, Chris. Resilient and safe food system for my kids. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, there's the kid. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I don't see the, do I see video? Or maybe I'm missing it. Ron, I see you. Yeah, see more social harmony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tamara next. Um, I uh, said that the world would be a co collaborative, a cooperative place. And we've seen how the world has responded to this COVID virus and that it is possible that, I mean, as, as many obstacles as there are, it's possible to come together for a global goal. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, I'd like to uh, bring us back to more of the debrief discussion, but we'd like you to do this together. Um, here's the question we'd like you to think about. What surprised you either about the energy transition and the climate transition and food and land and ag? What were your key insights? But most importantly, what will you take away from today? If you think of your possible role in that world, what would be an action that seems like you could be part of in the world to help this scenario come to be? And we're not gonna do this all together. We're gonna to send you back to your group, but not in your role. So you're gonna have a chance to talk to those same people um, and share as briefly as possible. See if you can get to each of you what surprised you, an insight, and something that you feel called to do. So Yazzie, with those three questions in mind, would you open up the, the groups again and people will go back, discuss this and see if you can get to what it feels like implications are. Welcome back everybody. Here we are with this scenario. Um, and so I wanna hit just some takeaways like surprises, key insights. There's no silver bullet. There's no one way to do this. I'm trying to, I'm gonna practice saying it another way. You can't plant a garden with one seed. Carbon price won't do it. Solar roadways won't do it. Afforestation. Instead, you need to plant the garden with many, many seeds. That's what's gonna build this beautiful garden of a transition towards well below two degrees or 1.5. What we're gonna do now is Let's see everybody, open it up to everybody, turn off all of the, or unmute everybody, and let's say goodbye in our own language, because uh, there are many people from all around the world. Say something in your own language as you greet your fellow travelers on this amazing journey that we're on together. So uh, can you do that, Yazzie? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.